Bivers. The best writer in a screenplay, short film, Airlock, by Carl Emerson and Dan Sandler. Okay, so Carl, let's talk about your project. Yeah, uh, what do you want to know? Well, <laughs> let's start with Airlock. Yeah, so... How, how, how did Airlock come out? Is that on? I, I think so. Let's but, just uh, make sure. I have particular hearing things. That's right, there you go. All right, so... so um, Airlock, that was a project that just came out of nowhere. It did, you. really? Yeah, we decided that we were going to make a focus on ability film, and you wanted to explore more in your filmmaking abilities not that because you hadn't, hadn't done as much yet no and not really so it was kind of a whirlwind experience i bluffed my way through uh college but otherwise big projects not not really so much and because focus on ability both as uh, a filmmaker with autism spectrum disorder and you know a film about people with things like dyslexia or seizures which uh happened to peter rossini the night before we were filming was Unfortunate, but he was still able to uh, he was still able to get top marks when our bus trip won won best creative film. So yeah. uh, Sebastian Chan was here. Congratulations to him on that one. Yeah, no, that, 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 that's and that's. And we debuted Airlock here last year. Yeah, that's right. We did show Airlock last year, um, and what resulted from Airlock uh, being at Focus on Ability? Obviously, we saw in the intro there that they awarded you best screenplay. Yep. And and what what was the prize that you got out of that? So I was given a mentorship under uh, under AACTA nominated writer Jamie Brown, who I, I'd not heard of at this point because, well, screenwriting wasn't such a thing. I just happened to win a prize for it. Now it's a little now it's a little more important. And so suddenly, here we are to make a new script to be adapted into a short film under someone with the qualifications that uh, Jamie had. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but it, was, it was something of a special experience, wasn't it? It was really daunting, but it was also a huge opportunity too. Yeah. I was, uh, so, so the project that you presented to him, because uh, we went up to Sydney and we met with yeah. him, and the project you presented to him was this, uh, I guess, spaghetti western. Yeah, because uh, everyone from the Pathways program was down there. So people like Benjamin Law or mm -hmm. others who'd won similar prizes. Yep. Because that was an inclusivity program under the Australian Writers Guild. So all sorts. I was. I was glad to be able to bring autism to that table as well. Yeah, yeah, and and so the the Western idea, it's been something that you've been sort of interested in for a little while. You've been inspired quite a bit by uh, the work, say, of um, Jim Jarmusch and um, obviously Sergio Leone. Yeah, on and off. I mean, I hadn't actually seen a Spaghetti Western until I was about, what, 16, 17 mm -hmm. in college. But then, you know, I, of course, who, who doesn't know the classic Rootin' Tootin' Cowboy ideas, the dual gunslingers, the, you know, the Lone Ranger types, and then suddenly there's the more dubious types if you look under the uh, Clint Eastwood's Man With No Name. Yeah. He did some pretty uh, shady dealings throughout it all. Yeah. Um, and, and so by, by working through that, that mentorship with him, um, you were able to put together a script, and that script has led to us moving closer to production on, on, a, on this film, which in turn, has led us to a Kickstarter pro project that we're going to put together so we can raise some funds for this project. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why we're here. We need your money, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. So, um, should, we, should we play your Kickstarter video? Yeah. And um, we'll show that, and then we can talk about it a bit more. Okay. All right, let's load it up. So, a uh, special thanks to past me for explaining why we need your money so that uh, I don't have to. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, Airlock was a no-budget project, so... Uh, oh, I guess as much as what it costs to build the set, but this one there are some bigger costs to it And I mean part of the journey as well has been about learning about the crowdfunding process and also some of the challenges that come with it um, And and things that we've still got to discover about how we're going to make the film And I mean I know we've gone back and forth quite a lot about What is going to happen if we don't make the money or where where will be other options are coming from? And what so if we go what if we get too much? Oh, well, we're never we can always have more more is better. So. I don't know uh, mighty number no. nine begs to differ <laughs> so, um, the, the, the premise of the film is when a grieving father is captured by a gang of outlaws He allies with a fellow captive in, in a crusade to slay his daughter's killer and must face the fine line between justice and revenge so let's talk about how 
uh, you've worked to sort of deconstruct the Western a bit because because of your interest in that and how you've tried to adapt it to your own. Like I think we've joked rather than the spaghetti Western, we've said the Sanguinetti Western. I mean, it's not it's not far off if you played the Bloodlines right. Yeah. So so tell us more about what you've been thinking about how how the Western fits into your Two Graves concept. So as the uh, as the video mentioned, if you look into say Clint Eastwood's Man with No Name, right at the start of uh, Fistful of Dollars. He sets a whole town against each other for his own gain, and then, you know, things inevitably go wrong, but, uh, but he saves the day and suddenly he's a hero. Oh, good, the bad, and the ugly. He's pulling noose scams with uh, Eli Wallach. Yeah, that's right. And so the idea was sort of, th these people go pretty far to get what they want. How about we try to really show that, like, deconstruct the heroic rogue and see just how heroic they may not actually be? Yeah, and, um, and so you, you, your, your ideas have this really in-depth idea about justice and revenge and how they balance with each other. How, how, how has, particularly I know Jamie helped you a lot in trying to get, it, get your grasp around those ideas. So, as long as I've been here in Canberra, which is most of my life, my dad's been working at the High Court of Australia, so I've, I've grown up with this relatively not clear-cut sense of right and wrong justice-wise, but the the particulars, the lines and things like that. And every Western movie, people are just shooting each other left, right and center. Is there, is there a reason? Is there a... What, what does it cost? Does the gun get lighter each time that you fire it off and take another life? Things like that. Mm -hmm. And how, how does that connect to your main character, Jackson? So, um, we've got... Images here, and, and the, these uh, concept drawings were actually done by Arwat Rowling, um, who uh, help, helped us out here and is d d helping Carl work out his ideas. But yeah, so thanks for that. Do you, want, do you want to share a bit about Jackson as, as, as the character and how that relates to the, the side of justice and revenge? So, well, as it said, grieving father, that is, that is Jackson. Again, how far is he willing to go? What lines is he willing to cross to the point where his daughter his, uh, his deceased emotional crutch. At what point is, by doing this, he going too far that he might as well, he might as well not? Um, and what about the villain in this piece? So, um, it's, it's, it, the, the characters all have, a, like, as you would expect in a Western, a strange mor like morality, and, and you're unsure what the things are. And obviously I'm trying not to spoil the yeah, concept, no. but talk about the, 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 the villain in the piece a bit. Um, so yeah, as you said, weird morals. One one would argue with our deconstruction. Say Jackson, he's the main character, but he's uh, he's no hero. And so this is our uh, man in the black mask. Our little sort of the idea right from the start was to go a little bit Lone Ranger in his design, and then subvert it when he begins to slaughter just about everyone. It's sort of a nightmare scenario. And so you no, know, doesn't say anything. He's not around much, but he serves to really kick off this. Uh, this plot and descent within Jackson's life. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I think one more point we'll do before we sort of open up if there's any questions there. Um, talk about this hybrid Western modern concept. Uh, uh, I think it's perhaps one of it, the, the film's more interesting angles that I'm looking forward to really helping you produce. So this was actually the first thing that we did on the film itself before we had a name, before we had a story, and we just said, hey, let's go a Western. I did this crappy drawing of a man on a, not even quite a horse, Staring over, staring over like his highway to the saloon with the title shot. Because growing up in Canberra, but going between, say, Melbourne a lot, you ride over the, ride over the Hume Highway, you get to see all these little areas that a young child of me would always picture things like Australian cowboys going around, shooting each other, things like that, in this, in this place that it doesn't look like a Western, but it's perfect for it in any way. And so then, you know, the little the mixes and matches came up, things like the old analog juice, jukebox. Yeah. So it's, it, you'd call it like an analog western. Yeah. No, no modern stuff. Just yeah, yeah. Of, as, as you said, with, the, with no iPhones, you know, yeah. that sort of technology. No digital technology, but there is analog te technology, which... And even that's not doing too great. Yeah. yeah. It's not revolutionary, it's relics. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, so um, if you have any questions now, please feel free to put your hand up. Um, I, I can keep going. Yeah, yeah okay, Michael. I'm just wondering, that's uh, probably something I haven't thought about. Um, have you thought of making films that explore the Australian frontier? The Australian with, frontier? With the bushrangers and the, the folklore that went on in that era. 
So the key thing with this one was story. So we knew, hey, let's make this interesting while keeping it Western. I think about it a bit, but I'm not sure that the, the, um, the ambiguity, because gr people growing up in the era, you know, say the colonial soldiers were the law defenders, the outlaws were Ned Kelly aside, mainly just beardy, tooth-missing savages. Mm -hmm. But finding a way to turn that on its head would uh, would actually be quite an interesting idea. And, and I think one of the yeah one of the discussions we've had no, as well that in the was is is the way that the the American style of of storytelling differs so much from the Australian uh, you know legend of of the bush the bush ranger stories. There is quite a far and I think the the fascination with with Carl's um, you know, the Spaghetti Western with is really sort of inspired this more. So it's trying to bring a little bit there, cross with a bit of the Australian um, fauna and stuff like that. Um, Brendan? Yeah, um, just tagging onto that question a little bit, um, with the landscape, I'm just assuming that you might be doing some outside location shots and everything. Uh, would you be aiming to make it look more like the classic American Western? Weave the slide. Or would we yeah. see some we see some like purely Australian. Oh no, the other one, the comparative. Yeah. Yeah. See, see that. I was running through a bunch of photos for just to sort of explain if I needed to, just how visually they're so different, but the backbones are the same. The unique, dangerous wildlife, the sprawling expanses, mountainous ranges. They look different, but the skeletons, the skeletons, the same. The barrenness and um, almost villainous style too. But there's also there's also a sort of uh, beauty in the solitude as well, and so that's the idea. We're not going too many characters on this one either. Yeah. So there's only, yeah there's only um, two main characters for most of it. One scene where there's a big crowd scene um, in a bar, and then um, but yeah most of it's just two characters, a two character piece. Yeah. So we've got our other guy Terence, who he he's a local who's been who's been roped into the story. And so he serves as the audience to deconstruct this sort of send up of the classic Western hero that is Jackson, as we slowly break down the facade, see if he really is as good as the Hollywood versions or not. And so it was fun to write him as well. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to sort of leave it on there is, as you can see, Carl's vision is very clear in his head um, and he is doing an incredible job to communicate his ideas and concepts so that we can work together to make this project a reality. Um, the next steps for us, as I said, is the Kickstarter. Then we're going to hopefully get into production a little later this year. Um, if we can get all, all that finance together, but as we discussed even uh, yesterday, this project is going to happen no matter what because, you know, we, we shouldn't just be dictated just by the fact that you know we, we don't have all the money we'll find the way that's what filmmaking is about also we're obligated by the Australian Writers Guild to oh, make yeah. it happen as the, as the yes. prize yes of course it did say that we had to make it into a film yeah J Jamie is definitely going to be interested where it's going so let's um let's give a round of applause for Carl thank you for your time Carl thank you for sharing thanks everyone um, and uh we'll move on to the next